Look, um, talk us through, I guess, your preparations for your upcoming fight. Uh, preparations are, so I'm staying in Auckland uh, majority of the time, uh, training up here at City Boxing Gym uh, under Lolo Hamuli and, and many other top professional boxers. So since turning pro, you're 11-0. Um, that's an impressive uh, fight record. Yeah, so I can't really complain how, how well things are going at the moment, but uh, we're just going to keep trucking forward and see how far we can take this journey. Now, you mentioned earlier that you're going to vacate uh, your two New Zealand titles. Tell us a little bit about that and reasons behind that. Um, just because mo moving forward, you know, on, a, on an international scale, I can't really hold on to New Zealand titles, or, you know, I can't really be... Because there's a requirement of defending them, um, you know, if I'm, if I'm wanting to move forward and fight international guys, and then I have to keep coming back to defend New Zealand titles. Was it a hard decision? Uh, yeah, it was, you know, because uh, it's, it's quite cool being a New Zealand champion, you know, and, um, you know, I represent New Zealand real proudly, and so holding New Zealand titles is something special to me, so, you know, it's, it's a hard thing to do. But. Tell us, or share with us, um, the decision behind it, and obviously um, you're fighting for a youth title in August, and um, I guess that's all part of the long-term plan. Yep, so I'm fighting for the uh, IBO Youth World title, and um, fighting a guy from Thailand who, He's, he's quite a strong guy, you know, he has all his wins by, by knockout. So it should be a good fight and, uh, you know, if I can make a statement against him winning this world youth title, uh, hopefully it opens up doors to, you know, bigger things moving forward. This guy that my training partner, he's, he's like my, pretty much my brother um, here, Leaky Maki, and I think he's going to be the next uh, New Zealand champ. Any international fighters you kind of looked at over the years and thought, you know, one day I would like to fight them? Um, yep, Australian uh, Michael Ketsetis, uh, I'd love to fight him. Um, hopefully next you know, after the, after this fight that I'm having. I guess one of your titles that kind of stand out for me is this one over here. Tell us a little bit about that. Uh, so that's the IBO Asia Pacific title. Um, the World Youth title that I'm fighting for is under the IBO as well. You know, it's a respectable um, organisation in terms of the world scale. Um, Vladimir Glitchko is the heavyweight IBO champion and uh, Gennady Triple G uh, Golovkin is the middleweight IBO champion. So. Um, that's the organisation that I'm running with at the moment, is the IBO. Let's talk a little bit about yourself and how you got involved with boxing and what inspired you to fight. Um, getting involved in boxing, actually um, my older brother boxed uh, as I was a kid and I grew up watching him and following him around, watching his fights and that's what sort of got me into it. And then um, you know, now I'm just doing it on another level. I guess your name is uh, quite interesting as well. Tell us a little bit about um, how your name, Kyra, came about. Um, so at the time that I was born um, in Egypt, uh, Cairo, there's a lot of war and stuff happening. Um, so, and there's a lot of news and stuff happening at that time. So when I was born, you know, my parents just decided to call me Cairo, which is quite ironic with uh, the boxing and, and being named after a place of war and things like that. So, yeah.